Hi, and welcome back to Book Stage and Screen. We have Shane Dunlop on the line. Hi, Shane. Oh, hi, guys. How are you doing? Yeah, good. And thanks good. for taking time out of your busy schedule. I know it's kind of hectic, cray-cray down there. Yeah, not a worry, not a worry. Beautiful. So we've got you on to talk about your many things, but one of the things is Under the Milky Way. Yes. So that's a show you created? Yeah, um, look, about two years ago, um, it was uh, first conceived um, a little over two years ago, and it's, yeah, it's taken us a long time to get it to air, but um, that's the nature of the beast, yes. and, uh, and it's, yeah, currently airing, which is uh, exciting. So what is Under the Milky Way? Because that, that is kind of all-encompassing. It's <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Um, well, the basic idea around the show is um, it's, it's set in the, um, the regional New South Wales town of Coonabarabran. In Coonabarabran, there is actually um, this really large um, uh, astronomy uh, observatory science facility at the top of um, a really beautiful mountain, um, and that's where the series is set. So there's, um, you know, it's a fictional series, of course, but there's a lot of real... Um, tangible um, science involved um, throughout mm. uh, and it's basically around um, this particular facility being um, threatened to being closed by um, by the government and what the people who work there do to try and save it and it, it's kind of it's a comedy um, you know but there are dramatic elements to it um, and that's probably yeah that's the best way I could probably describe it yeah no, it's great and there's some great characters in it really um sort of homegrown Aussie characters, which I'm really enjoying watching. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, look, there, there's, that's always something I like to... Um, I, I, I sometimes kind of think I, I need to write things that don't involve um, as large of a cast. Yeah. Uh, and then I just... Uh, it, it just works out being something that I, I seem to not be able to avoid. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we end up creating, you know, a, a, what... what a, you know, feels like a, a cast of thousands, um, uh, and a little. You know, essentially, what we've done here is create, you know, recreate a, a small town environment. Mm. And and so that world that you've set it in, the sort of astronomy, uh, science world, is that yep. something that you're interested in, or how did you sort of? Come yeah, definitely. That? I mean, I, I I've always been um, a fan of that and in awe of that kind of um, pursuit. Uh, I wish I. When I started writing the show, I wished I had a little bit um, more of a grounding in actual real science um, because since working on it you know and you, and you start to sort of involve yourself in that um, in that world, you realize well there's a whole lot more to this you know and i and i'm on I'm standing on very thin ice <laughs> with regards to some of the um, uh, some of the scientific facts or the creative license we've taken on certain things um, and there's a lot of people who have uh, arrived at the show that um, uh, you know are watching it and enjoying it whether it's on TV or online who are watching it because it is about them in a way mm. um, and so those people have become really like not concerned but sort of very mindful of the fact that oh god I hope that they are um, I hope that they are, are okay with the amount of creative license we've taken with some science in the show <laughs> uh, uh, because they you know because they're that this is you know uh, it's been one of the, the sort of happy coincidence of the, of the show is that there is this audience out there of people who are in, into astronomy, either they, they're enthusiasts or they work in that field, yeah. and they're seeing themselves reflected back on the screen in a, in a way, or at least their industry mm. um, and their playground. And so that that's that's been a really fun thing to have happen is to have this um, this audience kind of you know global audience really come to the show yeah. because of their shared interest in astronomy. And did you, um, oh, sorry, for, <laughs> I was going to say, did you um, shoot it in the town you talked of? Or that's yeah, just, in yeah. Coonabarabran. Um, so it's, a, it's, it's about an hour away from Tamworth, mm -hmm. give or take. Um, and, uh, you know, a reasonably small town, I think 3,500 people live there. Um, and so we made, we actually made two trips. The first trip we made back in um, uh, uh, sort of almost winter of 2015, and we had a, uh, a cast and crew with us of about 12 people. Okay. Um, you know, so we drove, we drove up there, spent a night in parks, checked out the dish, then made our way to Coonabarabran. So it was a two-day drive. 
um, and then we were on location for five days. Yeah. Um, and then we returned um, about three months ago to do some pickups, um, reshoots and things, uh, and get a d- things that we missed the first time. Uh, that time we flew because we only had a, a cast and crew of five. So, um, you know, two really big uh, location shoots for, you know, really, I think, almost unrivaled. There's only, I think, really one other show that I know of that, um, that you know, it's been on community TV that has... Um, involved interstate travel and, and, and location shoots the way that we have. Yes. So would you recommend that? Or? <laughs> no, I wouldn't. <laughs> the, the, the upside to it is yeah. that it, um, you know, by, us, by our scope being so large, mm. um, uh, or at least what we've attempted to try and do, clearly on a, on a, on a small-time independent budget, um, what we've attempted to do, in some ways helps us stand out a little bit um, because people hopefully recognize, wow, how did they get that done? You know, how have they, how have they managed to pull this off, you know, on, on, you know, a a small time budget. Um, And so in some ways I kind of feel like having gone that extra mile and had location shoots and gone to really interesting locations um, gives us a leg up in some way. Um, but as far as stress levels are concerned, and as far as losing hair and um, and 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 maintaining, you know, uh, I, yeah, it, look, I, it 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 takes some. Um, it was certainly some stressful times um, in in coordinating, you know, two um, two interstate trips uh, and location uh, accommodation, catering, uh, all these sorts of things. Um, you know, they, they were intense. Well, I guess the next project will just seem like a cinch. <laughs> that's going to be yeah. set in the offices of Channel 31 <laughs> yeah, in a right. corner. It's be, yeah, it's going to be all uh, all inside uh, lounge rooms and kitchens, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, within the, the, the 3,000 postcode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. So speaking of Channel 31, w- yeah. what is your sort of role there? What, what are you doing? Uh, yeah, so I'm the head of production here as well. Um, so I kind of wear two hats, I suppose. Um, I, I first came to 31 as a producer, uh, as an independent producer. Uh, the Milky Way, Under the Milky Way is my fourth series now for um, community TV. Um, and so then I, I started working here uh, about four years ago and um, and I'm now the, the head of production. So in short, what that means is I, you know, I handle everything from our in-house programs um, to the um, to maintaining our volunteer database. So we've got quite a strong um, group of young, um, you know, re- recent graduates um, or currently studying um, students uh, who are looking to get extra experience in film and TV. So I manage those guys, yeah. uh, and right down to you know uh, uh, producing the, the the commercials that you'll see mm-hmm. for um, local fishing stores and. Um, and uh, blinds and awnings companies and those sorts of things. So, um, yeah, it's really pretty much everything um, revolving around production um, and and certainly the transition to, you know, an online future um, uh, is is what I look after. And that's quite... um, I was at the Generation... Open Channel Generation Next conference where I met Brendan Park, one of your comrades there. Yes. And um, I was having a chat with him. And it it sounds really exciting what's ahead. I know it's a big change, but it is also um, some exciting changes. So can you tell us a little bit bit about that? Because Malcolm Turnbull has more or less shut down community television is that correct and uh, uh, he's rem- he is planning to remove well i mean it's long since gone off his radar he was he will always be remembered as being the the minister who made the decision so in effect it, it's it'll it'll rest on his shoulders mm. um uh, but you know since becoming prime minister i think he's moved on to 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 other things um so currently the you know the the, the state of play rests with um, uh, Mitch Fifield, mm-hmm. uh, and in short, um, they, the the the, uh, the current government made the decision to remove our access to the broadcast spectrum that we operate on. Um, it's got nothing to do with funding. Uh, we're, we're not federally funded. We're self-sufficient um, in that regards, and in fact, re- a really strong, thriving um, business model, um, well supported by the by the local community here in in Melbourne and Geelong. Um, and so essentially what they what all that's happened is they've just said well we're going to not sign the um, uh, the, uh, the the contract that allows you to um, to uh, broadcast on that spectrum 
Um, and that was meant to be at the end of 2014. Then it was pushed to the end of 2015. We were able to get an extension to the end of this year, and currently that um, appears to be um, uh, when everything will sort of shift from free-to-air TV to online. Okay. It's a bit of a challenge, yep. um, and, and ha- has been a crazy, you know, a crazy time around here. Yep. Um, really, over the last two years since the decision was was made back in 2014. Mm. Um, but but I guess as Brendan might have discussed with you, uh, you know, that, that that what they're what it has done is 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 forced us to sort of think about well, you know, what are we doing here? Yep. Why do we exist? What kinds of things could we be doing better? What kind of technologies are out there that um, you know, we can in, in, investigate and explore and, and how can we be, uh, you know, how can, through all of this, how can we be a positive story, mm. um, uh, you know, and, and, and what can we do to um, to make a success of the, you know, when life gives you lemons, you know, yeah. let's make lemonade. So um, that's where really where we're at, um, which is, you know, we're in this kind of middle ground where it's really exciting because we're getting all these interesting things you know, happening mm. around the place. Uh, a lot of doors are opening, but then there's this kind of fear. Well, yes, but we've we've got this um, business model that's existed for for two decades that is um, that is going to be shut down, and we're we're being asked to entirely transition. Um, really, before you know uh, any, we'll, we'll be the first in in Australia to have made this. Um, made this change uh, in the time frame that we've been asked to do. So, you know, 7, 9, 10, ABC, SBS, they, they, they will take 10 years to, to do this transition and there may be two or three years into that transition um, and we've been asked to do it in, in 18 months. So, um, you know, we're, we're really leading the way, I think, in a, yeah. in a lot of ways. Yeah, it's, it's mm. very exciting and I know uh, Brendan was talking about having quite a few information nights uh, with further down the track for people that are interested in finding out more? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's part of our, it's always been a part of our, um, our general remit here is to, is to, you know, be a, be a hub for information about how to, how to produce content, how to get involved with, with broadcast TV. And so really all we're doing is just changing the focus of that um, to be more about how do you how do you get involved with online yeah. um, distribution? How do you create for online as opposed to how do you create for television? And so, if there are listeners who want to get involved in your next show or anyone's show, really, yeah. what, how do they go about becoming a, a Channel Thirty One? person yeah well look there's a bunch of different ways that you know like a, you could approach it in the same way that i approached it you know originally which was um to to i guess get out there and 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 create something um you know that um you would like to have be a part of the i guess the content family um for channel 31 and and, and drive drive your own idea or drive your own um uh, you know content um uh, and then bring it to us and have it and have it be a part of 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 that whole ecosystem. Or the flip side is you can um, be a part of of the Channel Thirty One family by contributing uh, as a volunteer or contributing as a freelancer. Uh, we have a production notice board. I'm not too sure whether or not um, Brendan talked to you about that um, when you spoke to him, but um, that is now almost fifteen hundred. Um, people strong now, and we have daily opportunities that go up on that notice board. Um, uh, it's on Facebook, so if you're on yeah. Facebook and you're interested, I think if you just type in Channel 31 Production Notice Board, it'll show up. It's a private group, so you need yeah. to request access. But once you're in that um, that little world, mm. um, you know you've got daily opportunities that are coming. Some volunteers, some paid, and you know they're really interesting uh, opportunities to be involved in productions that aren't just you know in-house productions here at Channel 31. They also include you know major players out in the uh, out in the in the local community, uh, I guess most recently we had a, a, a series that was being filmed um, through the, the the Queen Victoria markets uh, night markets, and so we had a, a group of young people who got to sink their teeth into producing something over a series of you know almost um, ten weeks, um, and so that was really you know th- that's an example of the kinds of things that um, that people who are interested in 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 getting involved can find themselves doing. Uh, it's really varied and interesting. Yeah, that's great. And I mm. think it's exciting. I know it's been forced upon you, but it's exciting times ahead because yeah, you're leading absolutely. the way, and that's yeah. really good. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks so much for sharing um, about Under the Milky Way. We can catch that, I believe, there's one week hiatus. Is that right? Uh, no, we've oh, no, we're back. Uh, we're back. Um, the fourth episode aired this week, just pa- right. uh, this Monday just passed, and we've got the final two episodes um, over the next two Monday nights. Beautiful. We'll catch it on Facebook or YouTube. Oh, the Facebook will take you to YouTube or yeah, on right. Channel 31 on Monday. Is that yeah, Mondays at 8.30. Wonderful. Ooh, prime time. Yeah. Very, very nice. It is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, thanks for joining us and we hope to talk to you soon. Yeah, no worries. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Shane. Thank Bye. you. Okay. Bye.